Trump is a very transactional person. So he looks at Russia, it's like Melania. He sees it as a woman. I mean, I know how Trump operates. He sees Russia as a gorgeous, beautiful woman he wants to be with. Uh, let him cook, I guess. I don't know. And the CIA goes, no, 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 no. You're not getting in business with her. We're going to kill her and eat her. <laughs> and so they're cannibals. Trump <laughs> wants to have children with Russia. The globalists want to eat Russia and they want to eat me. Uh, so that's really to understand their mindset. They're cannibals. <laughs> What the f Yes, guys, this is not a drill. Vladimir Solovyov, the infamous Russian propaganda pundit, has just collabed with Alex Jones. I know, guys, I'm also pinching myself right now, but this is not a dream, this is real life. And to be honest, guys, this is just a legendary event, because the two great grifters and conspiracy theorists have finally met up, and they're about to bring us the most Z piece of content you've ever seen. During which, actually, Alex Jones broke out into real tears, so it must be pretty good. Hello Blazers, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. How you guys doing today? Welcome to a brand new video, and in today's video, guys, I'm going to be reacting to the newest episode of the show Still Have Your Life, which is the interview with Alex Jones. Now, this interview is actually about 45 minutes long, and I've actually watched it fully before filming this video. Yes, guys, it was a tough watch. And I wrote down some of the more memorable and interesting moments that we could react to. But anyway, guys, I'm pretty sure that if you watch my channel, you must be aware of who both Vladimir Solovyov and Alex Jones is. Vladimir Solovyov is the Russian journalist that's basically become the main spokesperson of Russian propaganda throughout the last decades and essentially he runs multiple TV shows on Russian TV in prime time, essentially just spreading propaganda about, you know, Nazis in Ukraine and, you know, how the special military operation is important and everything. He's obviously very Z and everything and also he's known for his very uh, emotional behavior when sometimes on his live streams he would basically lash out at people and start screaming. What's funny is that I actually personally made a video about Solovyov already a few years ago and I actually called that video the Russian Alex Jones. And now many years later, I'm watching them collab with Alex Jones, guys. Yes, we live in the Matrix. And yes, Alex Jones, I'm pretty sure, needs no introduction as well. Media mogul creator of Infowars.com, an insane far-right conspiracy theory lunatic, who also was ordered to pay almost 1 billion in damages because he claimed that Sandy Hook was actually a hoax in order to uh, remove people's gun rights. So yeah, Alex Jones is a pretty terrible person as well, but he is a very entertaining character, much like Salaviov himself as well. They're not great people, however, they are able to provide us with entertaining clips here and there, you know? But anyways, guys, if you do appreciate how much pain I have to go through in order to film this video, and by pain, of course, I mean watching 45 minutes of Salaviov speaking. And if you guys appreciate what I do on this channel, then you can support me additionally by going to the link down in the description and becoming a YouTube member, or doing a super thanks underneath this video. And now, guys, that the e-bagging is over, let's get right into it. Very good morning to you. It's definitely a it's pleasure. It's good to be here while we're still... It's good to be here while we're still alive and not dying in nuclear war. Look, both of you guys have way worse things to worry about than the nuclear war. And I mean like personal consequences, you know, not just some big world extension events, okay? Basically, we live in hell. <laughs> so finally, our job is try to stop it coming or not for everyone. But you're doing it from your side. You're telling people what you believe in. And you're blamed for that. You've been cancelled from whatever platform there is in the United States. And they still cannot close you. Yes, guys. So, uh, these two are gonna be the major themes they're gonna be discussing in this entire podcast. Essentially, Alex Jones and Salaviov in this video are going to be, uh, claiming that their goal is to stop World War III from happening and to stop a war between Russia and America happening. And essentially that they're both actually working for peace. Alex Jones doesn't want America to fund Ukraine. Salaviov wants Russia to take over the entirety of Ukraine. It's a real meeting of the mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't exactly see how being Z is like taking steps towards world peace or whatever, but you do you. And another major point that of course they're going to be talking about in this video is cancel culture and how Alex Jones got banned just for telling the truth. Well, of course, we all know that Alex Jones got in trouble for not telling the truth, but actually lying about a terrible, tragic event. There's a lot of them just saying redundant stuff about cancel culture over and over again in here, so... Well, I love our republic, and I'm proud to be an American, but I have to be honest, I live in an occupied globalist country with corporate oligarchs like Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates in control, and they are arresting everybody, they have dissolved our borders, they are annihilating us, and so America, major polls show 80 plus percent are against war with Russia. Uh, we know that George Soros and others started the war nine years ago. Do we know that? Do we know that the reason why the war started in 2014 was George Soros? It wasn't uh, Igor Girkin. <laughs> no, it was George Soros. He was in that, taking over uh, police stations and army bases in eastern Ukraine. George Soros, you... you 
You little, you little, you проказник такой, The average American understands this is your back door, this is your homeland, this is where Russia started was in Ukraine. The average American is not with NATO, we are not with the globalist. Uh, okay. So Ukraine is the back door and the homeland of Russia because Russia started with Ukraine or from Ukraine, right? He was obviously talking about the Kiev and Rus and everything. First of all, right, even if we assume that countries, you know, should own territories on the basis of, like, historical rights to them or whatever, the Kiev and Rus started from Ukraine, so technically Ukraine is sort of the precursor to Russia. So then by your logic, which is flawed in the first place, Russia should be part of Ukraine then, right? I mean, what is, what is this? And obviously, of course, even though Ukraine and Russia have common roots, these are countries that have, you know, grown apart through centuries and centuries. They had their own history, their own traditions, their own languages. It's not the year 900 anymore, you know? And I'm not saying the Russians are perfect, nobody's perfect, but we stand against nuclear war, and we stand against the Nazis that have launched the attacks in Ukraine. And so we have to tell the truth about what's happening, even if it gets us killed, because... Uh, the globalists are insane, mentally degenerate. Oh man, he could just go on for hours and hours, can he? And he, he will! This entire 40 minutes is basically gonna be him repeating the same thing, that America is stolen by the globalists, and that the people in charge don't represent, like, real truth and freedom in America, and that they're trying to lock Trump away to stop America from being free. And he's also spreading Z talking points at the same time. Great job, great job. <laughs> and they are so used to wielding American power of the country they've hijacked, like hijackers to take over an airplane, that they're flying the American airplane into the building like 9-11 that is Russia. <laughs> what does that mean? What is What kind of parallel is this? What does that mean, Alex? <laughs> okay, next point, let's move on. I just want the Russian people to know that just like you had oligarchs and you were occupied for a few years after the fall of the Soviet Union, but you kicked them out, <laughs> we are struggling in a death battle to remove the controllers of our country and we just hope in that process that we don't all kill each other. Alex is showing great knowledge and awareness of Russian modern history right here, surely. I'm sorry, I was just under the impression that after the fall of the Soviet Union in Russia, this sort of oligarchical state has been established, and most of oligarchs essentially were friends with the Russian president Yeltsin, and then what happened is when Putin came into power, he essentially either jailed or, you know, kicked out of the country most of these oligarchs from Yeltsin's era, and just replaced them with, like, his little childhood friends. And those people are literally now the people who own everything in Russia and have all the money in Russia. So he just replaced Yeltsin's oligarchs with his own. I don't exactly see that as kicking out the oligarchs and getting rid of the deep states. This is just complete fucking nonsense. So if there is nuclear war, at least it'll kill the globalist so we can all die together. I hope we can stop that, but I have a little solace that maybe God's gonna work through us all and we all just kill each other. But we're so close to it, I have to be very honest with you. This entire speech and this entire, like, this entire 45 minute conversation, right, is just so unhinged. There isn't even much to criticize here or like discuss in good faith because these two have like a very low grasp of reality, right? <laughs> Most of this is just insane speeches about God and whatnot. It's gonna get into that a little bit later. It's gonna get even worse. I don't even know how to comment on this, honestly, because it's just very hard to comment when you have two grifters who just spread hateful messaging and propaganda through fear mongering and conspiracy nonsense. But uh, how come that with great people of the United States, you allowed your country to be hijacked? <laughs> how come that people that are good Christians, that are hardworking people, great nation, how come that people like Blinken, Joe Biden, it looks like they're much more interested in putting whatever taxpayer dollars they can for the benefit of the Ukraine to launder money through the Ukraine, back to the families. A little bit of a pot calling the kettle black here, but uh, one thing I do want to point out is that Solovyov's English is actually pretty good. And actually what I find funny is that he's consistently Z in both Russian and English. You know how in Russian, essentially there's two ways to say in Ukraine. You can either say v Ukraine or na Ukraine. And the form na Ukraine is essentially considered to be sort of offensive for Ukrainian people because it basically kind of implies that Ukraine is not a separate country and it's kind of like a region. I personally choose to say v Ukraine, for example, but in Russian propaganda you will always see na Ukraine. And in English you have that as well because it used to be that you had to say the Ukraine in order to be grammatically correct essentially and now you don't really have to anymore and it's actually kind of considered offensive as well. And Solovyov says the Ukraine. So yes, even in English he's uh, just as Z as he is in Russian. So uh, consistency I guess, you know, that's pretty good. <laughs> we were taught we were bad. And then we were taken over by globalist, woke, leftist, transgenderism, LGBTQP, Satan brainwashing 
Oh uh, boy, so, once again, like I said for many years at this point, the American far right, American conspiracy theorists, QAnon, etc., a lot of their rhetoric actually closely coincides with the rhetoric of Russian propaganda. This is precisely why we see these two together, because their agendas match up right now. And this is the precise reason why a lot of the extreme conservatives in the West like to support Putin and, you know, essentially be Z, because in their eyes, Russia is this awesome conservative country and Putin is this sort of, like, defender of freedom and conservative values. I've talked about those kinds of people in my video called Stop Idolizing Russia many, many years ago. A classic at this point, right? So yeah, and that was essentially Alex's response to uh, Solovyov's question asking, what happened to America? And shortly before this, they were actually talking about Trump being arrested, being the sort of, you know, part of this entire huge plan. And I just want to say, you know, what really happened, Alex, is that in America, the courts actually work, and the people in power can be held accountable for their actions. In Russia, for example, the leader cannot be charged for anything in any way, and essentially enjoys being above the law. So no, Trump being charged is not a sign of censorship, but it's a sign of a working democracy, stopping the attempts to subvert that exact democracy. We have disconnected megalomaniacs that make Caligula or <laughs> Nero or Hitler look sane. This just in, guys. Alex Jones claims that Joe Biden is on the same level as Hitler. Quite interesting. To explain, this is not <laughs> the real American. You know, you talk about how have I survived? Probably by uh, selling brain pills containing soy. I think that's how you've been surviving for the last few years. <laughs> Well, Alex, it's, you know, basically it's amazing. I used to live in the United States of America, and at that time that was the most free country in the world, where people respected freedom of speech. And this time there were a whole bunch of good families, good Christians. They, every Sunday they were going to church, and they believed that God loves America, and they believed that their job is to bring good to the, to the world and freedom to people. Thirty years later, in the United States of America, you cannot say shit. If you say something that you believe in, you have a problem with it. Some weird sound design going on over at uh, Tel Aviv studio. So yeah, here they essentially start bitching about cancel culture some more, and you know, it's pretty redundant. They say the same thing over and over again, essentially. And of course, Alex Jones says that he's been destroyed for telling the truth. So we're not gonna look at this too much. That's why I'm here telling the Russian people, we know you're not expansionist. We know you're not attacking us. The average American, poll show, 80% don't want war with you. And we are, we are sorry our country's been hijacked and is being used as a battering ram. All the Americans in the comments, let me know if you agree with Alex Jones. And uh, I'm expecting your apologies. Alex Jones just apologized on the behalf of the American people for mistreating Russian people. I've been mistreated here and there, you know, for the past uh, one and a half years. So your apologies, please, in the comments right now. Thank you. Because he does represent regular American people after all, right? So <laughs> we're not pro-Russia. We're not pro-America. We're pro-God. And we're pro-anti- I love that. War. I love that. We're not pro-Russia, we're not pro-America, we're pro-God. God! What a dumb fucking statement. What does that even mean? What does that even mean? It's not believable and it doesn't make any sense because we all know that the only thing Solovyov and Alex Jones are pro is money. But for that, well, they have it. to believe oh. in God. They don't believe in God. Exactly. How can you believe in God and be for LGBTQ plus minus divide on something? <laughs> LGBT is shit, it has nothing to do with God. What is this? Like, honestly, what is this? Incredible, just incredible level of political commentary over here, guys. The nuance, the logic. I love it all, you know, people on the rise, they do love facts and logic, and that's exactly what uh, Salayov is bringing to us, just facts and logic. Who can we talk to? There is no one in the American political circles whom we can trust. Look at those old guys that are <laughs> in the Senate. They're insane, Mitch. That doesn't know where he is right now, what age it is, you know, what century it is. I mean, another one that's kind of ironic, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Russia, of course, is a country that is uh, very famous for having, you know, very young, capable leaders. The Russian president is very young, you know, some fresh bloods. The state Duma and everything, the leaders of all the parties, all very young people that definitely know what's going on in the world, guys. How is he saying this without seeing the irony? I mean, this is absolutely unbelievable. But the other second, it's like, oh, no, no, we cannot do that. No, no, we have to be politically correct. No, 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 no. Yes, we hate Russia. Of course, we'll support Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. What is this? <laughs> the level of commentary. I mean, I'm watching this and I literally feel like I'm like sitting in the kitchen in the commie block arguing with my like drunk Z uncle about politics and whatnot. It's just... <laughs> what is this? Who is watching this? <laughs> Honestly. How is it possible in the country that said freedom of speech is our main and the most important characteristic feature. What kind of power they have? 
What kind of money they have to buy everyone? I know, right? What's crazy is that Russia also has uh, freedom of speech as one of its main characteristics and traits in the Russian constitution. But at the same time, Russian people are getting jailed for saying an opinion that does not coincide with the Russian government. I know Vladimir, this is insane. Now after this, essentially what they turn to is that they start discussing the January 6th capital riots, the insurrection rights, and Solovyov actually defends it. We saw a crowd that was not armed. How can it be called riot? The same guys that were saying that there is exactly. nothing Listen, happening on the streets you know, of Kiev. You know, I do find it ironic that Solovyov is defending, you know, January 6th uh, participants and the event as a whole. However, you just know that if something like this would happen in Russia, where some group of people would try to, you know, break in into one of the governmental buildings or whatever, and to do something against the government, against the ruling class, you just know that Solovyov would be on this exact show calling them traitors and terrorists, right? So just the irony, the hypocrisy, the grifts, oh my god, the grifts, it's incredible. Yeah, but that's all will comes true. That is not basically possible. They are trying to put the gentleman in prison, not for the deed. He hasn't done anything. There is nothing that has been done by him, but for his thoughts. That's incredible. That's the new level of totalitarianism. That is no longer freedom. That is no democracy. <laughs> look who's talking. Like, look who's talking. Oh my god. And you just know there's gonna be a bunch of red-pilled people that are gonna watch this who are completely unaware of what's going on in Russia, right? So they're gonna be like, holy shit, like this Russian guy is speaking truth. Russia is probably a country with more free speech than America is at this point, guys. Crazy. You don't they're know not, why they hate genuine. us? Because we love God. They <laughs> hate us because we're Christians, Muslims, Jews, because we believe that there is God. What they're trying to say is no, there is no God. A bit of an interesting mix of, you know, super conservative evangelist rhetoric mixed in with a bit of the multiculturalism rhetoric of Russia that Putin evokes a lot of the time. Very interesting. I love seeing this, you know, blend of shit. The control is is what I read about supposedly happened in the Soviet Union. I don't know that actually happened. I just know we're living under what I read about. What I read about over there is happening here. But yes, guys, America is definitely on the level of the Soviet Union right now with all the repressions going on. Who the fuck is Stalin anyway? Biden. Now that's the biggest tyrant the world has ever seen. This isn't a game. And that's why our president is saying, sorry guys, but there won't be gay marriages in Russia. <laughs> we don't care what you do in your bedroom, but we know what family is. There should be father and mother, not parent number one and parent number two. There should be one parent because the other parent died on the front line. That's what's happening, I think. At least the Russians aren't rolling over to this. And I admire that. And I, that's why I'm here. I'll be attacked 10 times worse for this. I don't care. I'm telling the truth. I'm going down with the ship. So I'm telling you folks, they're coming for your children. They're coming for your life. They're coming for everything. This isn't a game. This is fucking unhinged. This is just absolutely insane. Just, again, what is that to comment on? That's yeah. not, you're absolutely right. That's not about politics. That's about the existence of humanity as such. That's not the war between Russia and America. It's the war between God well, and Satan. I, I want to say this. <laughs> so yeah, they essentially just start bitching about the LGBT and transgenders for a while after this as well. And they essentially, yes, they say that the modern American leadership, you know, the deep state, etc. They're all basically just Satanists that want to destroy the world, destroy the entire human race, you know. And the truth is, of course, that these Satanists don't exist. And in reality, the people like Vlad or Alex would be the ones taking your lives away and taking your rights away. Because, I mean, you can already see these guys are not very happy with criticism, because any criticism of them is an attack on free speech. So they will use this argument of free speech to take it away from you. These people want fascist tyranny, and the only reason why is because they hope that they will be the ones pulling the strings and deciding who gets to live or die. Whose life abides by the rules of God or not. And this is precisely why we should never tolerate the intolerance. You know, Alex, we have a saying in Russia, if God is with us, <laughs> who's against us? <laughs> and that's I, I why... That. I think even Alex here was like, mate, I think I heard that somewhere before. Right now he's probably thinking, man, haven't I heard that in German before? <laughs> Of course, guys, God is with us. That's, that's, that's never been said before. It's clearly fine that these are the words that are coming from official Russian propaganda. And guys, by far the best moment of the entire uh, interview is coming up. We don't hate Americans. We don't hate American people. We've all been created by God. So who is fighting against us? Who is trying to destroy our countries? Through the most common weapon. <laughs> Nazism. That's the common weapon of evil. 
and who supports them? America. Come on, guys, let's give a round of applause for great acting from Alex Jones. One of the greatest actors I've ever seen, personally, to cry on command like that, that is awesome. I think actually maybe he was being genuine, to be honest, who knows? I think in this moment, maybe probably uh, Solovyov is like, holy shit, he's crying, he like actually thinks this is real. Like, I'm here grifting, you know, just making my money from the Kremlin, but this guy is like batshit insane, he's actually crying over this. <laughs> that's... That's why they started with America, that's why they want to corrupt America. Because America used to be the beacon of freedom. <laughs> And that's why they want to destroy it. People like you won't that's allow so that. Crazy. This is amazing. This is amazing. I've personally never really seen Alex Jones cry before. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, objectively, this sucks, but this is the world we live in, guys. This is the Matrix. What is even happening at this point? I have no idea. So yes, after this, essentially, they kind of go in talking about, you know, Nazis in Ukraine for like another five minutes after this. And uh, Alex basically says that, you know, Russia is basically justified in everything that it's doing. And, you know, that these globalists that are trying to destroy America are trying to destroy Russia and America by using Nazis who actually come from Ukraine and America. They're like working together. I mean, I don't know. It just makes no fucking sense. It's literally like hearing two drunk uncles talk politics. Complete gibberish. But I do want to show a couple more funny moments from this interview. And if you say something against them, oh, you're a Russian propagandist. You cannot have your own voice. Why? They want to, they want to debate with you? No. They want to destroy you. They're so scared of your voice. They're scared of freedom. That's why they want to destroy. They want to blame you. They want you to be silent. Wow, once again, Solovyov is really, really mad that somebody is getting silenced over their opinion. Crazy, I know. I wonder if Solovyov has ever heard of what's happening in Russia and how, you know, comedians and YouTubers and, like, musical artists are being labeled foreign agents for basically having a different opinion. How artists get their concerts cancelled, how people are jailed, kicked out of the country, so on and so on. I mean, once again, guys, it's just incredible. It's just incredible. The level of grift only rises higher and higher. I just find it absolutely unbelievable that Solovyov has the guts to pretend like he's some sort of free speech advocate. America used to be the most beloved country by Russians through the 90s. That's pretty true. And not by the American people, but by American politicians. We were badly screwed. They lied to us. They kept zero of the promises. Zero. The, the same stuff. Here. <laughs> I love how Alex just doesn't even want to listen to Solovyov's bullshit at this point. He's just like, nah, I just want to, I just want to shot. <laughs> Trump is a very transactional person. So he looks at Russia three times the size of the U.S., the most wealthy country in the world resource-wise. It's like Melania. He sees it as a woman. I mean, I know how Trump operates. He sees Russia as a gorgeous, beautiful woman he wants to be with. Uh, let him cook, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> And the CIA goes, no, 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 no. You're not getting in business with her. We're going to kill her and eat her. <laughs> and so they're cannibals. Trump <laughs> wants to have children with Russia. The globalists want to eat Russia, and they want to eat me. Uh, so that's really to understand their mindset. They're cannibals. <laughs> what the fuck? You just gotta love how unintentionally funny Alex Jones can be. This is amazing. Like, who else would be able to say something like this with a straight face? So good. <laughs> so good, man. The perfect knight in shining armor, Alex Jones, fighting for God and for what he believes in. Alex, it was a pleasure, and I'm honored. Thank you. You can find us at the Verboten site, Infowars.com. Be safe, and let's stop nuclear war. <laughs> Yes, guys, it was a pleasure as well, to be honest. Uh, not really, but uh, it was funny. It was funny. A lot of very, very entertaining moments. And there's actually way more. If you want to, you can watch this entire whole thing. But yeah, you gotta have some level of preparation for the cringe. Just don't forget to put on your cringe hazmat suit, you know? But yes, what can I say? Incredible. It's, it's, it's been absolutely incredible to see these two, you know, giants of cringe finally collab and come together. And, uh, you know, yeah, we should, this, should, this, should, this should be a weekly thing now, to be honest. <laughs> I just want to see who outgrifts who, you know, that's going to be like, uh, 
the competition here. But yeah, guys, uh, hopefully you found some enjoyments out of this. Hopefully you had a laugh or two. I don't know. Huge thanks to Salavio for actually putting out this video in its original form without the voiceover in Russian, because then I wouldn't make this video. I wouldn't do the fucking subtitles. But yeah, guys, that is going to be pretty much it today's video, though. If you guys did enjoy it, then please make sure to slap the like on it. And once again, guys, if you want to support me additionally, then you could go to a link down in the description, become a YouTube member. It's basically YouTube's own version of Patreon. It's like a monthly donation. It helps me out a lot. You can also do a super thanks underneath this video. And yeah, guys, that is gonna be it for today's video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.